Maury Wills might be the best baseball player that you've never heard of before. What is up my dudes and welcome back to another MLB video and today we will be starting a different series called Who Dat where we talk about someone that isn't as well known as they should be. If you guys like this idea for a new series, please leave a like on this video and consider subscribing. Maury Wills finished his career with five times in the top 10 for MVP award voting. Wills is currently top 10 in Dodgers history in hits with 1,732, runs 876, and at-bats with 6,156. Wills was 26 years old when he broke into the big leagues on June 6th of 1959 with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was born October 2nd, 1932 in our nation's capital and grew up as one of 13 children. In high school, Maury was a star quarterback and pitcher. After Wills graduated from high school, he signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers, who quickly converted Wills to a position player. For his career, Maury Wills played 1,555 games at short, 362 games at third base, and one game at second base. By 1953, Wills was playing shortstop for Class B Miami and seemed on track for the big leagues. But there was one pretty substantial person that stood in his way, Pee Wee Reese. Ever heard of him? Pee Wee Reese was a shortstop for the Dodgers for 16 years, Hall of Famer, 10-time All-Star, so clearly it was hard to find a spot for Maury Wills. Here's where things get interesting, though. The Dodgers allowed Wills to go to the Reds via the minor league draft following the 1956 season. But wait, didn't Maury Wills play for the Dodgers for 12 years? After hitting 267 with 21 stolen bases for the AAA Seattle Rainers of the Pacific Coast League in 1957, the Reds returned Wills to the Dodgers. He stole 25 bases with the Dodgers' AAA affiliate in Spokane in 1958. Ah, home at last. No way the Dodgers let him go again, right? Nah. Maury was sent to the Tigers in the offseason. But Detroit sent Wills back to the Dodgers at the beginning of the 1959 season. Jeez, what a slap in the face for Maury Wills. It's not like Maury Wills was a bad minor league player by any stretch of the imagination. His averages from his first year at age 18 up until his age 25 season, he hit 280, 300, 286, 279, 202, 302, 267, and 253. So of course, there were a couple rough years in there, but that's normal when climbing from single A to double A to see some sort of struggle. At this point, Wills was 26 years old and a career minor leaguer, but the 1959 season would prove to be his breakout year. Again, Sent to the Pacific Coast League, Wills hit 313 in 48 games with Spokane that spring, stealing 25 bases. And with Dodgers infielder Don Zimmer struggling at the plate in L.A., the Dodgers called up Wills for his big league debut on June 6th. His numbers for the rest of the year consisted of a 260 batting average with 27 runs scored and 7 stolen bases in 83 games. Not amazing by any means, but the steady play at shortstop was crucial as the Dodgers rallied to tie the Braves for the National League pennant before winning the best of three playoff to advance to the World Series. In the series, Wills hit 250 as the Dodgers defeated the White Sox in six games to capture their first World Series title since moving to LA. They would win two more titles in the 1960s, with Wills in the middle of the action for a team that relied on pitching, defense, and plenty of speed. In 1960, Wills won the first of six straight National League stolen base crowns as he became the first National Leaguer and only the second big leaguer to win six consecutive titles. Wills' 50 steals in 1960 marked the first time an NL player had reached that level since Max Carey in 1923. Dodgers manager at the time, Walter Alston, said that Maury is an inspiration to our players. His fiery spirit rubs off on them. Following a league-leading 35 steals to go along with 105 runs scored and his first Gold Glove award in 1961, the switch-hitting Wills turned it up a notch for the 1962 season. Wills stole 104 bases, breaking Ty Cobb's modern-era record of 96, set in 1915. Wills recorded 208 hits and scored 130 runs in 1962, hitting 299 while leading the league with 10 triples. The Dodgers led the NL race throughout the summer, only to be defeated by the Giants in a three-game playoff to advance to the World Series. 
This was before the modern day playoff bracket where the top two teams advanced to the World Series naturally without division and championship series. In addition to the MVP award that Wills won during the season, he won another Gold Glove award at short and set a record that might never be broken, appearing in 165 regular season games because of the three game playoff against the Giants. The next season, Wills achieved his first 300 batting average with a 302 while stealing 40 bases for a Los Angeles team that won the National League pennant before sweeping the Yankees in the World Series. Wills and the Dodgers missed the postseason in 1964, but they rebounded to capture the NL pennant in 1965. Wills stole 94 bases that season, becoming the first modern era player with two 90-plus stolen base seasons. The Dodgers defeated the Twins in seven games in the World Series with Wills tallying 11 hits and 3 steals. Wills' run as stolen base king ended in 1966, but the Dodgers won their third National League pennant in four seasons before falling to the Orioles in the World Series. Wills was named to his seventh All-Star game that summer, but following the season he was traded to the Pirates for Bob Bailey and Gene Michael. The Dodgers fell to 8th place in the National League in 1967 while Wills became Pittsburgh's everyday third baseman and helped the Pirates to win 81 games by hitting 302 with 186 hits and 92 runs scored. At age 35 years old in 1968, Wills stole 52 bases for the Bucks while hitting 278 during the year of the pitcher. The reason for the year of the pitcher was because of the major league increasing the size of the strike zone from the top of the batter's shoulders to the bottom of his knees. This is the same season in which Bob Gibson set the modern ERA record of 1.12. The Pirates left Wills unprotected in the 1969 expansion draft, and he was taken by the Expos, where he played 47 games before being traded back to the Dodgers in a deal that sent Ron Fairley to Montreal. In Montreal and Los Angeles in 1969, Wills hit 274 in 151 games, stealing 40 bases and finishing 11th in the NL MVP voting. He continued to be the Dodgers' primary shortstop throughout the 1971 season, hitting 281 in 149 games in 1971 while finishing 6th in the NL MVP voting at the age of 38. In 1972, prized prospect Bill Russell took the spot of Wills as the Dodgers shortstop and Wills retired following the season with a career batting average of 281, 1,067 runs scored, 2,134 hits, and 586 stolen bases. His career total in steals ranks 20th all-time and 16th among modern era players. Wills remained in the game after his playing days as a broadcaster and later managed the Seattle Mariners in 1980 and 1981, becoming just the third African American to hold a big league managerial job. Wills changed the game of baseball with his speed, setting up other players to follow in his footsteps in the future. Lou Brock and Ricky Henderson are two primary examples, but there are many others known for their speed. In 2019, the Dodgers announced it would induct Dodger greats into the legends of Dodger baseball in recognition of their impact on the franchise, both on and off the field. Inductees will receive a plaque honoring their Dodger achievements, which also will be on permanent display at Dodger Stadium. Last season, the Dodgers inducted Don Newcomb, Steve Garvey, and Fernando Valenzuela. They also announced that there would be a fourth member to join them. Any guesses? That's right. Good old Maury Wills. Maury Wills lives on to this day. He is currently 87 years old and resides in Washington, D.C. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and we'll see you guys for the next one. Later.